Homeowner equity is getting wiped out in neighborhoods like this. In this zip code, home prices are down 15% over the last year. And there's listings on Zillow right now where the seller is taking a $200,000 loss from what they bought it for eight years ago. That's right, everyone. This housing crash in certain cities is very, very real. And as it continues, we're gonna see more homeowners lose their equity and go underwater on their mortgage. Because right now, according to CoreLogic, there's 1.2 million homeowners who are underwater. And really, this is something, if you're a home buyer, that you wanna make sure doesn't happen to you. You don't wanna go buy a house for four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000, and maybe even more in certain parts of the country, put down a big down payment, and then see that down payment wiped out. That's what's happening right now in cities like San Francisco, where I am right now, as well as places like Austin, Texas. So if we look at a map of home prices in America over the last year, the percentage growth, you can see that it's basically a tale of two housing markets. It's a bifurcated housing downturn, where on the west coast of America, we see all these metros in blue where prices are down. Lots of places in California, Nevada, and Idaho, as well as parts of Texas. However, in various locations in the southeast, as well as the Midwest and Northeast, prices are still up. And I know a lot of people in those areas where prices are still going up, they're wondering, when is my city going to be like San Francisco or parts of California or Austin? When can I expect a 15% decline in values year over year in my zip code? And the answer to that question, folks, has everything to do with distress in force selling. We're not going to get big, big home price declines in a certain city or market without an element of forced selling. And that's what San Francisco has, right? San Francisco has a lot of issues. I'll touch upon more of them later in this video. I'm going to give you guys my feedback from being in this city over the last couple of days. But the primary thing that's going on here is an economic downturn. There's been a big downturn in the tech industry over the last year and a half. Lots of layoffs from big companies like Google and Meta, but also lots of startups closing up shop and laying off workers. And when someone gets laid off, that all of a sudden introduces, let's just say, pressure to sell their house or maybe their second house or investment property. All of a sudden, there's liquidity need and the house needs to be converted to cash, which is what causes what's called cascading home price declines. At some point, we will see the selling pressure here in San Francisco and Austin spread to the rest of America because all the leading economic indicators still say a recession is here or around the corner. If you look at the conference board's leading economic indicator index, Take a look at this, everyone. It's saying that we are deeply in recessionary territory based off leading indicators. And this indicator from the conference board has predicted every recession going back the last 60 to 70 years. Moreover, we have Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve going on an aggressive rate hike campaign. They're taking money out of the system. Banks are now cutting loans. We have all these issues in commercial real estate. The writing's on the wall for massive distress. We just haven't seen it yet, which is normal, everyone, for the beginning stages of a housing downturn. And I've said this a couple times. And I'm going to say it to you guys again, because I read in the comments and I see a lot of you are frustrated out there. You say, oh, Nick, I've been watching your channel for two years and you know, the data makes sense, but like you've been wrong. People say I've been wrong or the housing crash hasn't happened. Like, what do you have to say to that? If you go back to the mid 2000s, Robert Schiller called the housing bubble in 2004. Michael Burry called it in 2005. We didn't see major price declines until the middle of 2008. Once the economy started to go to hell in a handbasket. So I would encourage a lot of you guys not to get discouraged by the fact that things are really expensive expensive out there still. Not to get discouraged by the fact that we're still in a big bubble, because this is normal for a housing downturn. On average, a housing downturn lasts five years. But the primary issue, folks, being sellers. Sellers on the U.S. housing market are stubborn. They do not want to accept the fact that their equity has gone down and has been erased. Like uh, the listing I showed you here in the Mission District in San Francisco, do you think they want a list for 200000 less than they bought it for in 2015? They bought it for $1.4 million in 2015. Now they're selling it for one point two. Do you think they want to do that? No. But after years years and years and years of deciding whether to sell, whether or not to sell, they finally are pulling the trigger. Similarly, I was out in Oakland in the East Bay yesterday and I found a listing on the market for $599,000 for a townhome. This was a nice townhome in Oakland. This looks a lot like the townhomes you would see in some of the you know cities like Nashville and Austin. It's priced for $599,000, $100,000 less than they bought it for in 2019. And ultimately, these homeowners, they can absorb it. Data from the Federal Reserve shows that there's approximately $28 trillion in homeowner equity in America. America right now, an excess value above the mortgage for homeowners in America. Now you can see this has skyrocketed over the last couple of years. It started to come down with the beginning stages of the housing downturn. But I want to point you folks to 06. You can see 06 had a similar run up in homeowner equity. And there was people back in 2006 who were saying the same argument that people are saying today. They were saying, oh, homeowners have so much equity in their homes. 
that uh, nothing that bad is gonna happen. You can tell me in the comments if you've heard someone say that to you, like a realtor, uh, or maybe someone who works in real estate say like, oh, the housing crash isn't gonna happen because people have so much equity uh, and they're just gonna hold. Well, the same thing was going on in 2006. That's actually the sign of a bubble. The fact that homeowner equity overall is so high. But now, if you're a home buyer and investor, let's talk brass tacks. If you're looking in a city or neighborhood, like say you're looking in Florida, or say you're looking in Tennessee, how do you understand when it's gonna be the right time to buy? How do you develop an idea of looking at data to tell you, yes, now's the time to buy, no, now's the time to wait. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now, everyone. The first thing you gotta understand for your city and your neighborhood is how overvalued home prices are. And on ReVenture app, I have what's called overvaluation percentage, an estimate of how overvalued prices are for every zip code in America. That's right, everyone. So actually in this zip code right now, interestingly, home prices here in the Mission District uh, in San Francisco are undervalued. And they're undervalued because of the big decline that's happened the last couple of years and the fact that incomes have continued to go up. So the value to income ratio in the zip code is the lowest it's ever been. And so that says it's undervalued. Now, does that mean you should buy in this zip code right now? No, prices are still very high on a nominal level. Everything on Zillow is still pretty much over a million dollars. Mortgage rates are high, but it's at least telling you the zip code is starting to look like a better place in time to buy. However, if you were to go to say Tampa in Florida, where I know a lot of you guys are, you're gonna see lots of zip codes are listed as 20, 30%, even 40% overvalued. Meaning that the ratio of home prices to income is the highest level it's ever been, way above the 20 year average, which is the telltale sign of a bubble. And so that's the first step, everyone. Understand how over or undervalued home prices are in your zip code. It's not a guarantee that it's gonna go to that level, but that helps you start to understand, all right, what am I getting into as a home buyer or an investor if I buy? But now, what's also important, everyone, is to understand the direction of prices over the next six to 12 months. And to understand the direction of prices, whether they're gonna go up or down, I would encourage you to look at three data points. Inventory, days on the market, and price cuts. How many sellers are cutting the price? You look at those three data points, you're gonna know what's going on in your market in real time. For instance, if this zip code here in San Francisco, we can see days on the market is way up. Over the last seven to eight years, we have sellers having their home on the market for the longest period of time in the last seven or eight years. That's a bearish signal for home prices, suggesting prices will keep going down. But now, interestingly, the percentage of sellers cutting the price in this zip code has gone down to one of the lowest levels in the last seven to eight years, which is a more bullish signal. Meanwhile, inventory levels have come down and are back to normal. So this says to me that this zip code here in the Mission District in San Francisco is gonna probably still see some price declines, but it's likely that for now, the big drops are over. However, if we were to go to say Dallas, Texas, and look at some of the zip codes in and around Dallas, let me know in the comments if you're in DFW, you can see in some of these zip codes on the eastern side and northern part of the metro, inventory's way up at the highest level in the last seven years, price cuts are way up, and days on the market is way up. And so if inventory price cuts and days on the market are way up, you feel pretty confident that prices are likely to go down further the next six to 12 months. And ultimately my mission folks here with ReVenture Consulting and the app I developed, the ReVenture app, is to help you as a home buyer investor make a better decision. Let's take the guesswork out of some of these aspects of buying a house or investment property. Of course, we can never be 100% sure, but is it worthwhile knowing how overvalued your zip code is historically? Is it worthwhile knowing what the price cut and days on the market trends are? Of course, you will feel much more confident about the decision you make, whether it is to buy or not to buy, by looking at that data and knowing that data. Now, I'm gonna finish this video off with a rapid fire round, showing you where prices have gone down the most in America over the last year. But before that, I wanna give you guys a little commentary here on San Francisco. I've been here the last several days, a lot of you've probably seen through my shorts that I've been traveling around California. And uh, what is going on here in San Francisco? Well, folks, it's not great. The homeless problem here, it's pretty bad in certain areas. And not only is it like in your face, the homeless people here are aggressive. Like I had a guy like lunge at me the other day. I was just walking on the street, he lunged. And a lot of the locals here in San Francisco, they become just like acquainted to this being normal and they try to rationalize it. So when I talk to people at the bar, or at the restaurant, they're like, oh yeah, like, you know, it's not that bad, but it is pretty bad. So the city still got some major work to do to clean a lot of this up. A lot of these people really need mental health assistance and they probably need to be off the street and not doing drugs on the street. And if the city can accomplish that and help these people and help the city, then I, I think there actually could be a bullish case for San Francisco 
in the future because one thing is for sure the other thing i've learned being here this is still the epicenter of innovation that has not changed since the pandemic started like all the uh, major innovation occurring right now in ai it's happening like in this neighborhood here in the mission district and a little further north and as much as people try to say like oh silicon valley is moving to austin or silicon valley is moving to denver that's just not true this is where the cutting edge of innovation is happening and to understand what i'm talking about folks this building right behind me that's the headquarters of open ai the company that developed chat gbt in that building right there here in the mission district you look around a map here of all the startups it's all in this area here in san francisco and so the wealth that comes from ai if it's another internet as far as like changing the world it's gonna be constantly concentrated again here in San Francisco, which is of course going to be a boon for its local housing market. But of course, an interesting question to ask is what is AI going to do to all the other cities and economies and housing markets in America? Because I think there's going to be quite a few job losses that come from the development of AI. You can, guys can let me know if you agree with that in the comment section. But I mean, off the top of my head, copywriters, graphic designers, video editors, journalists, content creators, a lot of them unfortunately are going to lose their jobs because of AI. And I don't say that to scare anyone out there i say that because that's going to be the reality of this technology it's something that's going to vastly increase the productivity of companies and the workforce but it's also something that's going to lead to lots of people losing their jobs all right but right now let's finish with a rapid fire round everyone where have prices gone down the most over the last year in america well, if we open up data from reventure app and look at different counties we can see san francisco county is number one 12 year over year decline in home prices according to data from zillow which is shown on reventure app we can see that mendocino county california is also up there in northern california we can see Travis County in Austin. You can also see we have Louisiana showing up. We have Alameda County in Oakland. We have the Bronx in New York, interestingly, uh, showing a 9% decline year over year. We have Ada County in Idaho. That's where Boise is. Then we have Clark County in Nevada. That's where Vegas is, down 7%. We have lots of California overall. Some of those markets experience like a little mini rally in the spring and early summer, but I think that rally at this point is starting to peter out. Now that's where prices have gone down the most. How about where they've gone up the most? Well, we can resort this list to go from high to low, and we can see it's a lot of smaller counties counties in states like North Carolina, Tennessee, and Alabama, where prices are up the most over the last year. As I said earlier, these markets are affordable. You can still buy a house in most of these areas and have a monthly payment below 2000 a month, which is attracting inbound migration and also makes it more affordable for the locals to buy. Lastly, what about Florida? Since I know so many of you are looking in Florida, we can actually see Florida is beginning to see home price declines, especially on the west coast of Florida. The declines are small, one, two, three, four percent year over year so far across Tampa and Cape Coral, but the declines are starting to come while my Miami and Southeast Florida is still holding on at 5% appreciation. However, I don't think that's going to last. I was just in Miami last month. Tons and tons of vacant apartments. The economy is slowing there. I think Florida is the next shoe to drop on the U.S. housing market. If you want to track this data for yourself and help yourself make a better decision about where and when to buy a house, go to Reventure app, www.reventure.app. You can look at all this data for free for a limited time. I would encourage you guys to do it soon and sign up soon. This is going to be a paywall going up for premium data points in the next 30 days.